Okay, everybody, this is Sheets, and um, Bobby's uh, enjoying uh, time with his girlfriend today. Uh, so I'm going to take care of the uh, DFS uh, MLB preview show. And uh, you know, I promised uh, Bobby I would, I would review uh, the good news yesterday. Uh, so over the weekend, I, I basically won in every sport except for baseball. I mean, I literally, I think I hit the optimal in like four different sports, um, but baseball the last week or so, I, you know, just wasn't quite getting there. And I guess the baseball gods shined on me yesterday because I took down that, uh, the bat flip um, for, uh, for 26,000. Um, I actually split it with two other people. Um, and for those of you that were, that were watching, I mean, I, during the live uh, stream yesterday, during the Labor Day live stream, I actually, I built these literally in the live stream. So if you want to know what my process was, you just, you saw it. I mean, you saw me actually do it. Um, and I'd like to say um, that, and this is one of my issues with content providers, is I'd love to be able to say, oh, dude, this was like such an easy lineup to come up with. Of course, you have to, you have to five man stack Pittsburgh, make sure one of them gets zero. Okay. And, and you, you fade the entire uh, Red Sox Tampa game that combines for 23 runs and you fade the Phillies that, that showed up for 12 runs and then you just win. Of course, that's how you win. But the fact of the matter is, is that I, I, you know, put my projections into Saber Sim. It built a whole bunch of high variance, high upside lineups. And one of them happened to hit, you know, like, like look at some of these others, by the way, like, so the winning lineup had 181. The other ones, I mean, the next closest one I had was like 60 points lower, you know, 110, 110, 108, 120, whatever it is. Um, so it's not as if I was some genius that just came up with this particular lineup. I just put 20 lineups in and, and you know, the, the good news is, is that they all had, you know, upside shots. And that's all you can do in this game, you know, especially with baseball is gives you, give yourself good upside shots. And then when the, you know, when the variance gods kind of, uh, you know, shine on you, you're, you're in a position to win. And that, that's all you can do. Um, uh, and, and end up winning. That's <laughs> the, the best way I can describe it. Um, so again, that was my process. I would just, I, you know, I use my projections that I that were available to all premium subscribers. I threw them up there into this, the Sabersome optimizer. Uh, I didn't change any settings and I just ran it. Now I'm not always going to play that way, but that's the way I did it yesterday. And that's just the way it is. Um, Okay, that's obviously good news. Uh, and let's move on to today's slate. So because Bobby isn't here, I, I'm going to do the same thing that I, um, that I like to do with respect to, uh, to, to analysis. And I don't think I'm going to be going game by game. Um, it's just, the, the, it, I just can't... Um, just easy for me to take an overall slate view. Well, first of all, let me just say that the key game from a hitting perspective is going to be the San Francisco at Colorado game, but we're, we're going to get to that. My initial look at the pitching here is it's probably going to be pretty fishy uh, and probably surprising to some people is that, you know, I, I am currently not rating Cole or Nola to be particularly good. Um, relative to value. I mean, I, I have Cole and, you know, I have Cole rated as the fourth best pitcher when you consider value. And I have Nola, uh, is it the fifth? Yeah, the fifth best pitcher with respect to value. So I don't know if I'm going to, now that doesn't mean that I'm not going to play them. And this is a, this is a distinction that I, I discuss quite often, right? It, is that is a difference between you know, being the good play and actually playing them. You know, sometimes, as I was mentioning in Discord, I'll, I'll run builds with either Roto Grinders or Sabres or whatever, and I'm not even going to get the same, the teams that I think I'm going to get. And that's kind of like why in the MME world, I don't like to hand build because, you, you know, what you think could happen when you build is not exactly what does happen. And you don't want to kind of force it when, it, you know, just because it doesn't make sense to you individually, that's kind of hard to explain, but um, that's just, that's just the way that is. 
So it's very possible when they actually build the lineups, it's going to actually have Cole and Noah. I just don't know yet. Um, but if I was going to hand build, the first thing I would say is that Cole and Nola would not be where I would start. Um, I mean, as a matter of fact, I mean, my, my two pitchers that I have right now, let me just get back to my sheets on the other side is, is, is um, two real standouts actually. And, and that's going to be Snell and, uh, and Zach Gallon. Um, you know, and we can go over why. I mean, they're, they're both pretty sharp and they're both against, you know, pretty weak teams nowadays. Uh, Snell is coming off basically a no-hitter in his last game. Um, and he's been pretty sharp. Now, he has thrown some duds out there, so he's not without some variance. But, you know, these guys rate to be the top plays for me by, by a significant amount, actually. And unfortunately, ownership kind of... Um, reflects that as well. I mean, I, I currently have Snell as, as like almost 50% owned or, you know, between 40 and 50% owned and that could change, but you know, that's one thing you have to kind of factor in. Um, the other thing I would say is that Gallon is also going to be high owned. He's 30% uh, right now. So it's not like these, this, this take is particularly earth shattering um, to play Snell and Gallon, especially when you're looking to prop maybe pay up, at hitting or to get access to the Coors game. But again, as, as I mentioned before, if you are going to go chalky at one, in one sense, you know, you don't want to go chalky in the other. In other words, if you're going to get chalky at pitching, you just don't want to get chalky at hitting. And if you get chalky at hitting, you don't want to get chalky at pitching in GPPs. Um, so that's, that, that's, that's, that's that. Other, other pitchers that I actually like, one pitcher that I like more also than Cole and Nola is going to be Max Freed, or maybe it won't be, but right now it, it's going to be Max Freed. And, um, uh, ooh, there's one guy that I haven't, I don't know why I, I have a difficulty getting to him with respect to, to pitching, and that's a Spino. I always feel like I'm going to get to him, but then I don't. Anyway, Max Freed looks to be a, a very strong play as well. Um, he doesn't have that. He doesn't appear to have that tournament winning upside, um, but he's going to have about, you know, one third the ownership of, of Snell, right? And if Snell, you know, busts, then, you know, then Freed is probably a very safe play to get 20 fantasy points. Um, you want to know the truth, or at least 15. So again, Freed provides, at least for me, kind of a safe, safe route. Um, uh, and, and I do like him. Other pitchers, and one other pitcher that I will that I will mention, uh, and this is a guy that Bobby likes to play from time to time, and I don't usually get to him, but here as again as a pivot off of guys like Z Gallon, who's going to be pretty popular, is uh, this guy Caprillion. Um, not the easiest matchup in the world, obviously, but he's got some heat. He's got you know good GPP upside. And he's, you know, a good price pivot off of what could be a very chalky Zach Gallon. So that's the other, um, the other thing to, to think about. So again, to kind of summarize uh, pitching wise. Yeah. I mean, it's top raw points. I mean, you're, you're looking at, well, I shouldn't even say that. I actually have Cole and Nola scoring less fantasy points than Snell, you know, even though they're, they're, um, they're priced higher. Um, of these two, by the way, Cole and Nola, I mean, you'd like to think that Nola would be the better play, right? I mean, against Milwaukee, as opposed to Cole having to deal with Toronto at 1,200 more. Um, obviously, this is probably the worst play of the season. Uh, Logan Webb at Colorado at 9,500. Uh, now, with that said, now watch him go through a no-hitter. And these other guys, I'm just, you know, you can make case for cases for them in deep, deep MME, MME, but I'm just not getting there. You know, Odorizzi, Wade Miley, um, guys like that. Um, so, yeah. So that's basically the extent of the pitching. Now, let me, again, let me go through the hitting here. Um, and I'm going to do it. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do first the stack view, and then I'll try to go player by player. Uh, position by position, maybe. 
So as I kind of alluded to before, the team that's just do- going to be dominating their projections and dominating the ownership and dominating everything is going to be San Francisco going against Colorado, basically not even priced up at all. They, they rate as, as the top um, raw stack uh, team by an amount which is very, very rare since I've been doing these sheets. Um, and again, the sheets are for premium members on True Vest Def- TrueDFS.com, uh, advertise, advertise, advertise. Um, a- anyway, um, and in addition to that, they do rate to be a very strong value as well. All of which is going to be reflected in the ownership, which is going to be significant to say the least. However, may as well uh, talk about who those players are. Uh, uh, Brandon Belt at uh, 4,500. Um, did Yaz go to the, to the, uh, injured list? It's possible. Um, no, not sure, but you know, again, watch, watch for scratches here, but you have Yastrzemski, you have Wade, you have Buster Posey at catcher. You have, uh, you know, Chris Bryant, if he gets, uh, if he gets to play, um, just the normal cast of characters. Um, but these, I guess, would be the top five. And as you can see, you know, if you play either Snell or Caprillion or Snell and um, Gallon, that was the other guy, Gallon. I mean, you could you could jam these San Francisco guys in really, really easily, which is why this is going to be a very, very chalky bill. Um, and in addition to that, like, if for whatever reason, you don't want to play Snell, which is fine. And you want to play like Nola. You can still play these guys with significant ease. You, what you can't do is play no one and Cole, right? That that's something you can't. Uh, no one and Cole. I meant Cole and and Nola. Okay. Um, so yeah. Um, so that's the top of the list is, is in San Francisco, but that doesn't mean you have to play that. Again, you know, if you're going to play the chalky pitchers, you you really do have to go elsewhere. So what what are those elsewheres? Well. The first one for me, at least now, is looks like it's going to be Kansas City. Um, Kansas City for me, they rate well. It's going to be a couple of teams, but but let's start with Kansas City. Um, Kansas City rates to be at least for now kind of the second best value, and also very very high up there in the raw points. Also, maybe like fifth. Um, so may as well just highlight who those players, at least that are popping for me, are on Texas, uh, excuse me, on um, on Kansas City. That would be the stud Salvador Perez, 5,800. Don't worry about it. Just pretend he's an outfielder or make you feel better. Um, Carlos Santana, 2,900. Michael Taylor, I always like playing him. He's only 2,500. That is uh, That is significantly underpriced uh ben attendee and the other guy i had it was dozier so again, now if you play those guys then now if you want to go and this is what happens even though cole and noah don't rate to be you know the best values if you play kc you could you could play these guys like if you want to like you could afford this um, and I think if you don't want to play San Francisco, a lot of people might decide to go this route um, because, you know, uh, although Snell is going to be really popular. So you, what you could do is you could you could fade Snell and do this and play Cole and Nola. Because, look, I, you know, Cole is facing Toronto. Obviously, that's no bargain, but he's still Garrett Cole. I mean, he still can put up 40 freaking, fan, 40 freaking fantasy points against these people. I mean, like anybody and Nola, too. So you could do this. Or you could double pay up for pitching. Don't worry about about playing Gallon and you know or the Caprillions and these other these other good SP twos if you play Kansas City and it's not as if Kansas City is in a bad spot I mean they're against Baltimore and you know that's always a good spot so Kansas City is a very very natural value play value stack to get to um, next team I want to highlight is Atlanta. So although Espino is, uh, is, is, you know, very talented, 
Um, Atlanta has been really, really hitting the ball well, and that's reflecting kind of in their projections. Like right now I have Atlanta as my, what do I have them as? Like my fourth or fifth, like fifth best value. And then also from raw points, I have them as second. So that's like, it's like a really, really big deal. So they're significantly in play. So let me just highlight the Atlanta guys that I'd be interested in. So that would be Freddie Freeman. That would be Ozzy Albies. And these guys are expensive. So, you know, it makes it somewhat difficult to get in, except you still have the lack of respect for Jose Soler. You have Adam Duvall and what, Austin Riley's the next best guy? Yeah, probably. So then you have Austin Riley, even though he's 5,400. So here, if you put, if you stack Atlanta, then you can't do this. You can't play these premier guys. I mean, premier, these uh, top um, priced guys. But what you certainly can do, well, can you? Like if you played Snell, Snell and Gallon, then you're going to have to dumpster dive, which you, you're going to be able to do. Um, so you could do this. Like if you wanted to fade San Francisco, play the chalk pitching, and then, you know, uh, and so you could do this by, by stacking Atlanta, playing the chalk pitching, and then filling in the rest of that. So that is another thing you could do. So that's Atlanta. That's you know, another one I wanted to highlight. Uh, the other team I wanted to highlight, was there, was there two? Let me just look at this really quickly. It was going to be San Francisco, KC. Oh, okay. Two or three. Uh, one more, maybe a, maybe a third. And that's going to be Cincinnati. So Cincinnati, for me, rates to be um, about fourth or so as far as value, and then about third or so as far as raw points. So that's, that's good enough for me. Um, so again, as a pivot off of San Francisco's, uh, Cincinnati makes a lot of sense. And let's go over these Cincinnati guys. Joey Votto, 4,900, certainly very, very strong. You have Jonathan India, 4,500. You have Castellanos at 5,200. You have, uh, if you want to do this, well, we'll get to the catcher in a second. You could play Naquin. You could play Aquino, either one. And then if you wanted to play uh, Tucker Barnhart, you, he's probably going to play today. You get him at 2,800. Now, again, just to kind of see what kind of lineups build this way, if you pay down for pitching like up here, then you have a lot of money that you could spend on, you know, real high quality guys. But here, if you want to double pay up, like you want to play for Nola and Snell, even still, you could get to this if you want, you know? So again, when I talk about who I like versus who I could play, you know, if, while I don't necessarily like Nola as much as say Zach Gallon from a value perspective, you know, if I could afford it, like you could almost play Cole and Nola if you want to do this, right? But then you're dumpster diving here, but you are fading Snell. So this is this is actually a pretty pretty interesting way to build. Um, so Cincinnati is an, is is the other stack that I wanted to mention. There is one more on DraftKings, and that is from that same game, uh, Kansas City game, and that would be Baltimore. And as you might have, as you might suspect, I mean Baltimore, you're going to get. Um, it's going to be more of a value type stack. So you'll probably be able to play them with whoever you want, but let me just put these guys in. So Cedric Mullins actually priced up a little bit. Cedric Mullins is up to 4,800. Austin Hayes, 3,200. Um, I actually have Jorge Mateo rated high today. And then I have Santander. Those outfielders are always so strong. Uh, Mancini, if he plays, you have Severino, he gets in. So as you might imagine, like if you play these Baltimore guys, I mean, you could, you could pay up for whatever pitching you want. Like you could play Cole and Noah, like if you wanted to, right? Um, so Baltimore, Atlanta, Cincinnati, uh, Kansas City, those would be the non-San Francisco teams that I think that I would be targeting um, today uh, on DraftKings. Um, with respect to FanDuel, um, I may as well go through that. Let me just pause for a sec. 
Okay, so I may as well discuss some FanDuel real quick, see if there's any difference. How about that? So in FanDuel, I actually have, it's very similar. Like I have Zach Gallon as my top value over here. Um, uh, and the question is, as always, is, is am I, am I going to need it? Right. FanDuel, you, you almost never need to pay down like this. Uh, and then after that, I have uh, Snell next. Um, so Snell and then, then, then you're down in value, at least to the, to the Nolas, Freeds, Coles, just like before. I think the one difference in stacks that I wanted to mention, that's why I was doing FanDuel, is the first guys are, 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 are the same. You know, there, there's San Francisco, there is um, Cincinnati, Kansas City, Atlanta, but, uh, and Baltimore. But the one team that kind of sneaks in here uh, on FanDuel, because you can afford a little bit more, is San Diego. Um, so, like, for example, you know, just for fun, see what a San Diego situation would look like. Let's say you would play, um, let's do this. So let's do, let's, let's build a San Diego with somebody lineup. Okay. So let's play, um, uh, is Tatis, oh, he's still a shortstop over here. So we'll play Tatis, um, uh, Machado, um, Myers, and Cronenworth. Where's Mike Myers and then Cronenworth? Isn't Cronenworth uh, always first base? Okay, Cronenworth. So if you played Gallon, that's where this is where Gallon makes sense. Like if you wanted to pay up for these San, these San Diego guys, so you could play San Diego with you know any of these other teams. Uh, play them with San Francisco, obviously, you can play them with the Reds, you can play them with Kansas City, you know, and make that work. So that's the one difference I did want to emphasize that on FanDuel, you can, you know, San Diego, because of your ability to pay down for Gallon, becomes really, really in play, I think. Um, I guess while I'm here, I may as well highlight a couple of um, one-offs maybe on DraftKings, how about that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the, the one-offs that, that are not part of the stacks I mentioned, if that exists. So Because I'm looking at it, and I do see that San Francisco is, is you know, all these guys are great one-offs. Cincinnati, all these guys are great one-offs. Oakland. Yeah, so that, that's pretty much I, – I would say that the only two guys that – well, there are three guys that crack my one-off list that are not in those stack games – and those are going to be Josh Van Meter for Arizona, um, Manuel Margot from Tampa, and Telez from Milwaukee. But honestly, the best one-offs are going to be from those San Francisco, um, Cincinnati, Atlanta, San Francisco games. Um, that's pretty much it. That was my kind of top-down breakdown. And I'm going to, you know, be live a little bit later to go through, uh, you know, you know, firm up my lineups and have some fun with it. Uh, that's about it. Uh, good luck, everybody.